of transformers, right? Uh, I would say that sometimes it happens that you want to have two transformers operating in parallel, okay? And for you to be able to connect those two transformers in parallel, there are certain conditions that need to be met, okay? There are certain conditions that must be met before you can connect any two transformers in parallel. So they will ask you these conditions for which is in terms of the A or the part, okay? The four conditions for operating two transformers TFRs in parallel. Four conditions for operating two transformers in parallel. They said the first one, they say that you must have the same voltage ratio. They must have the same voltage uh, ratio, meaning that N1 over N2 from transformer number 1 must be equal to N1 over N2 from transformer number 2. Then they must have the same voltage ratio. The next point is that they must operate on the same percentage impedance. They must operate on the same percentage impedance. The third point says that they must have the same polarity. Like both transformers must have the same polarity and lastly number four the fourth point says that they must have the same phase sequence they must have the same phase sequence what do i mean by that i mean that if the, the, the one transformer has a phase sequence of r y B. It means that other transformer must have the same frequency of R, Y, B, like that. So those are the four conditions that need to be met when we operate two transformers in parallel, right? So let us make just a, a basic circuit diagram of connecting two transformers in parallel. Suppose I have a supply voltage. From V1, then I add some windings of the, of the transformer and I call these windings, uh, windings from transformer, transformer A. Right? This transformer A has its own impedance connected like that. So let's call this RA and call this one XA. So these two give you ZA, like the carriage. So this represents one transformer, transformer number A. Then I connect in parallel to this a second transformer. And I'm gonna call it transformer B, right? With its own impedance, ZB, which has RB connected in series with X. B, and both these transformers are supplying a common load in this manner. So both these transformers are supplying a common load. Now this load will draw a current called I, let's call it IT, I, I total, I mean, let's call this IT. Now if I'm looking at this, I will have a current from transformer A, I will call it I A, and I will have another current from transformer B, and I will call the current I B in that manner, right? So obviously, the voltage that I will read on this side will refer to it as V2, which is the voltage on the load side of the parallel operation of our transformers. So obviously, here I will have a back EMF EB, and I will have a back EMF EA, right? The, the, one of the conditions says that they must have the same percentage impedance. So how will we do that? 
that's the task that we are going to be looking at now. But before we get to that, let us see now. I'm saying I've got two transformers, transformer A and transformer B. They are both contributing to a common load, right? They are connected in parallel. But I need to know, you see, I need to know how, how much does transformer A contribute towards the load in terms of the KVA rating, in terms of S. And I also need to know that how much does transformer B contribute towards my common load, right? Then we have a couple of equations uh, or calculations that we can uh, do to look at that load distribution. So let us look at the load distribution of the two TFR. TFR I mean of the two transformers. Let us look at the load distribution of the two. Let's start with the simplest one as the current. Towards the total current, how much does machine A contribute? Towards the total current, how much does machine B contribute? I mean, obviously, these two are connected in parallel. You can use what? A current divider. Okay? You can say that the contribution of machine A to my total load is equal to the current of the load or the total current of the load multiplied by the impedance on machine B divided by the sum of the impedance on both machines Z A plus Z B. Right? So this is the current contribution of machine A to my total load. Then we look at the second contribution, current B or machine B will contribute towards the total current according to this Z A over Z A plus Z B. So this is just your basic current divider rule. You just swap them around, right? If I'm looking for B, I will start with A at the top there. If I'm looking for A, I will start with B at the top there. So that's so that's the relationship in terms of the current. But our aim is to look at the KVA rating. We want to know by how much do we, in terms of KVA, by how much does each of these guys uh, contribute. So obviously at the, at the load, I will have an S and we call it S uh, total, right? And obviously machine A will give me an S, which is SA, and machine B will give me S. B like it, right? So S is basically your KVA rating of your transformer. S is basically your KVA rating of your transformer. So to calculate the contribution of machine A, to calculate the contribution of machine A, S A will contribute according to S total multiplied by ZA divided by ZA plus ZB. And machine B, SB will contribute to the total load according to the following equation. S total multiplied by ZB divided by ZA plus ZB. Right. Uh, so this is supposed to be ZB and this is supposed to be ZA. You just swap them around. If you're looking for A, you use B at the, at the numerator. If you're looking for B, you use A at the numerator. Then, the main condition that we use for our calculations would be this one. They must have the same percentage impedance. So it happens that sometimes you have two machines that are operating and the condition is that the rating of the two machines are the same. But see, it says that SA is equal to SB, right? If we have this condition where SA is equal to SB, then we use these equations exactly as they are. If you have this condition where SA is equal to SB, 
I am saying you will use these equations as they are. But should it happen that SA is not equal to SB, that means that uh, the condition that is no longer met. I mean, so you, may, you then need to find a way or a, some sort of a ratio that we will use to equate these two, right? So we then choose a base KDA then, and we are going to call that base KDA, then we will call it SP or S base. So let me show you how to get that value. Just remove this quickly. Let me show you how to get that particular value. Alright. For you to be able to calculate a, a new base value. So suppose you are given information uh, S of machine A is a certain value and S of machine B is another. A, let's call it A, K, B, A, and let's call this one B, K, B, A. And clearly these two values are not equal to each other. So we then decide, we choose one from the two. We make it a base value. To, to standardize your choice, you can choose either of them, right? But to standardize your choice, I would say always choose the one that has the biggest K, B, A, B. From the two, okay? So let's say, for example, uh, S from machine B is greater than S from machine A. So you let you let S from machine B to be equal to your base K B A. So you have now a new base K B A. You choose, and I'm saying between the two to standardize for your calculations. Always choose the one that has the biggest value. Right? Always choose the one that has the biggest what? Biggest value. Right. So now you let now the S of machine B to be equal to the to be equal to the base KDA. Once you have chosen the base KDA, then you will then come and calculate a new Z B and a new Z A. So then we have met the condition of impedance is being equal. Right? How do you get the new value of ZA? So now ZA nu, I'll write it like this, will be equal to ZA old multiplied by S base, which is the one that you've chosen, divided by SA old. Right. You take the old value at SA. You use it to divide the S base of which is the one that you have chosen and you multiply it by the old ZA. I'm sure. So they will give you ZA or they will just give you information that will be now going to calculate ZA. Right? And again, ZB nu will then be equal to ZB. Old multiplied by S base divided by S B old. And if you look at this, and you've chosen S B to be your base value, S from machine B to be your base value, you can see that this uh, will be equal to one, right? Because you're dividing the same. Now that you have the new values, then you can calculate now the contribution of each machine according to the standardized base values. Then the contribution of machine A to my total system will be equal to S total multiplied by Z A, I'm sorry, Z B new divided by Z B new plus Z A new. Right? And the contribution of machine B, Z S B will then be equal to S total. S total is the total KVA of your load direction. Multiplied by Z 
z a nu divided by z a nu plus z b nu. Right, so those those are all the conditions that we need to look at, and those are all the equations that you use for this uh, for this type of questions. Then I gave you homework, right? Then I gave you homework. Then ask them to do it homework together. That was on activity three point five, page number one hundred and eighty. So we'll do that homework together.